and hi everyone. Welcome to Viewpoint. Today we're going to be dealing with the shadow, a study on the 23rd Psalm that we've been on for the last couple of weeks, and today we're dealing with about the issue of contentment that is found in the presence of the Savior. So please stay tuned, and I pray you'll be blessed today. Hi everyone, I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. So glad you're with us today on Viewpoint, and our desire is to bring to you the gospel, the word of God, that will enlighten, encourage, and strengthen, and bless your life. And I also today, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to bring you this through many media sources, television, Facebook, so many ways in which you can get it, and we are so excited about what God is doing here at GBC, Gethsemane Baptist Church, 411 Blue Ridge Street in Lynchburg, Virginia, one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg, formerly called Lynchburg College. One block up off of Lakeside Drive, 930 and 1130 on Sunday morning. By the way, you can also watch the 1130 service if you are not able to attend church. You can watch a live program at church program at 11.30 every Sunday morning on my Facebook page, Carlton Duck. If you're not a part of my Facebook page, click on today. We'd, we'll, we'll be glad to receive you and have you and let you be a part of what God's doing. You'll find great information and everything encouraging. We don't deal with all the negativity that's going on in the world. We deal with the positiveness of God's Word and how it will change your life, your home, and your family. So, Click on, be a part of that. Also today, I want to encourage you to click on another site. It's our new website. You're going to be blessed by it. It's AliveGBC.com. AliveGBC.com. A-L-I-V-E-G-B-C.com. AliveGBC.com. I believe you got it now. Be a part of it. Go there every day. There's new information on that site every day for you. And uh, you can also go to my Facebook page from that. You can also go to our YouTube account and see programs that we're producing and it's on television. You can watch them in case you're not on Shintel. And uh, you'll be blessed by that. I, I really believe that your heart will be encouraged. And we want to encourage you to come worship here at Gethsemane. I really today take serious the coronavirus, the pandemic in which we're in. We have really sought to intensify and to make sure that our facility is squeaky clean. And by doing that, we not only do the cleaning, the deep cleaning, the wiping down of everything, we also uh, have it it's fogged every week with a, a special chemical that removes any type of difficulty or challenge that would be to your health. You know, we're taking all steps to protect your health and to give you a safe environment to come worship in. So we want to encourage you to come and to take advantage of that and be a part of the good things God's doing at Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're very thankful for our ministry, our people, and the opportunity to bring you the gospel every week on this program. Wednesday night, we have a great program that's also seen on my Facebook page, and it's Ask Me Anything. If you've got a question about the Bible, here's where you bring it, and you can send it to me. You can send it to me by messenger, email. You can text it to me, whatever. Uh, we would love to get that, that question so we can answer that question, and we do that at 5 o'clock every Wednesday afternoon. So join us for a great time in Bible study. If I went through all the things, the plethora of things that we're trying to do to minister to people, it would take the rest of this program. But I just want to encourage you to be a part of what God's doing, a good place to bring your family, a safe environment. We have a kitty care kit for every kid every Sunday morning. They sit in the service, but they have something that will occupy their time and is biblically based. They have all types of neat little things in that package that will encourage them, and they take it home with them, and the next week they get a new package. So, folks, I mean, again, there's so many things that we're trying to offer people to be encouraged with during these times of difficulty, and it's found right here in the church of Gethsemane Baptist Church. Well, let's get into the message today on Viewpoint. And we're talking about the shadow, and we're talking today about the subject of contentment. And I believe there's contentment in the shadow of God's presence in our lives today. You realize that America is ranked, and uh, of course this was taken back prior to the pandemic, but uh, America is ranked 19th concerning the happiest place in the world to live. 
Right now, I'm not really sure there is a happy place in the world to live, to be honest with you. But, you know, it tells us something today that people gauge happiness by wealth, income, things, tangible things that they can acquire through money and things of that nature. You know, the, it's the old adage, the more you have, the more you want. And that's the world that we live in today. Benjamin Franklin said, contentment makes poor men rich and discontentment makes rich men poor. Paul said in the book of Philippians 1 and uh, verses 11 and 12, and I'll read it to you. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content underscore that word. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry and to abound and to suffer need. So you ever think, you know, people talk about happiness and again, I've said this a lot, but happiness is contingent upon a happening in your life. If something good is happening, you're probably happy. If something not so good is happening in your life, you're not so happy. But David, he begins with a very important phrase here in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. There it shows that he is a part of us and that he continually is by that word is, which is a present tense. And then he says, I shall not want. You know, in this one little verse, and I know we've been kind of jumping around on the 23rd Psalm, but uh, anyway, we won't, we won't challenge that. But what I think this thing really shows us that this really unlocks the door to the contentment that we are seeking in our lives. True contentment is not about the possessions today that you may have or the things you try to indulge yourself in. It's about the presence that overshadows us, and that's the presence of the Lord. We need that presence in our life. It's not about the goals that we're trying to meet. It's about the God who meets us and gives us new goals and gives us a new life and gives us an abundance. You know, I love the way Jesus put it in John 10 and 10. He talked about the thief has come to kill, steal, and to destroy. But he said, I have come that you can have life and have it, watch this, more abundantly. So today, true contentment is, is not about the things of the world. It's about the Christ that lives within us today. It's about the, the things, not so much of the prestige that we're trying to acquire. It's about the person that we should adore, and that's the Lord in our life. So live in the shadow of the shepherd, and you'll find today, and you will really be pleased to discover that there is contentment in the shadow of his presence today. What we have in the presence of the shepherd is more valuable than anything today that you could have in life. It's really contentment brings a genuine hope into your life by the presence of God. And I, I got several observations I want to show you on the viewpoint today that I believe they'll show you about the presence of the shepherd and how that he gives us contentment in our life. There's a lot of confusion going on now between the pandemic, between the election, and between the economy, and between the riots, and, you know, where do I stop? I mean, it is so much, and there's so much fear. People are filled with so much difficulty and challenge and struggle in their life and worry. But let's talk about something today that's positive that will encourage your life. And this is positive because it comes from God. And it's real because God is offering it to every person who today will know him as their Savior. Number one tonight, uh, today, the splendor of his presence is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. So David simply calls him the Lord. And this speaks of his remaining effort explaining his statements. So the Lord in the Hebrew name is Yahweh. You know that. And it's often translated into English as Jehovah. You've heard of that. So it comes to be, uh, comes from a verb, really, that means to be. You could translate that as I am. Well, you know, those are the words that he used with Moses on the backside of the desert when he appeared to him, and he called himself I am. And when Moses said, who should I say has sent me? He says, I am has sent you. 
And I'm glad he is the I am. I'm glad there's none like it unto him. This is the Bible's way of saying that the God of the past, the present, and the future is the same God. He's always there for us. The holy name points to the eternal God of the universe. And today, he is a sovereign God because he's the God who's completely and totally in control. So we're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about the great I am today. He is the Lord. And you know, today we look into the pages of God's word and names today bear less significance today than they did somewhat in the Bible. In ancient times, names reflected basically a person, their, their particular nature, their character, and those attributes about their life. Names represented power. Names represented authority. And it's interesting that God, he chose his own name because, you know, his name today, there's no name that we could give him that would be suitable for his name. Oh, listen to this. His name is above every name. So Yahweh is a fitting name for God because it reminds us that he is independent, he's self-sufficient, he is the eternal God of creation, of revelation, and redemption. He possesses all power in heaven and in earth, and he can do all things. As the word of God says, Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen, A Lord God, there's nothing too hard for thee. So we realize that he is God, he is El Shaddai, he is God Almighty. He is, he is all these other names, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, Jehovah Nissi, the Lord who is our banner, the Lord who indeed is our healer, that is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is our shalom or our peace. We realize he's all these things. And there are many other names that are connected or associated with him. And he is Jehovah Rohi, which means he is the Lord who is, is right now. Tomorrow this time, is. He is our shepherd. So realize that David boils all this down for us and tells us that he is the Lord. And when you have the Lord, you have everything that you need that is found only in him. He is a sufficient God. He's always there. So in every situation that you face, whether good, whether bad, whether up, whether down, whether the midday or the midnight, you know what? He is there. For he's the God who said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He's exactly what you need when you need it. And you can look to him because, you know, people have limitations. We can only do so much. There is not a limitation found in God because he can do all things exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So when you knock on the door of heaven, he says, I'm also the door. And thank God we can come into that door through Christ and salvation today. And we realize today that he is also the truth because the truth sets you free. Isn't this good? Think of all these things that he is and that he does for us today. And even when we face death, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So therefore, in Christ, we have life, abundant life, new life today. And when you are surrounded by the darkness of temptation today, he says, I am the light of the world. He will guide you out of that temptation, and he will give you the strength to turn and say no to Satan, and that today you can live in the promise of his presence. When you're searching for the reasons to live, he says, I am the life. And when you have his life in your life, your life is really worth living. Well, actually, you think about it. Proud of salvation, the Bible tells us that we were dead in our sins, and Christ quickened, or he made us alive, and that we have life in him today. And we realize all these glimpses of his description today, his splendor, we know that he is, and I, I really, I could spend days and hours upon this, about talking about how extraordinary our God is. And he is that. Now, the question I've got for you today how extraordinary is he, is he in your life? How extraordinary is he in your living? Is he just a Sunday God to you? Or is he an every minute, every second, every breath God to you? When you let him be that, that's when he becomes extraordinary. The awesome God today is the source of of true contentment in our life. So our deepest desire today is not the things that God has or even the favor from God. What I think we should desire is we should want God. 
in our life. We should want the Lord as a part of our living today. Why do we see contentment today in the the things of the world when those things will fail you? We, we live today as a born-again Christian. I am living in the extraordinary presence today of the shadow of the Almighty. And in that is just so much that God has given us. So, you know, look at a sunrise or a sunset. Look at the elements of God's creative genius today. Creation points to a creator. This ridiculous idea that the world embraces today, I'm not even going to give it any time. It's ridiculous. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. What he did, what God has done, reminds us of who God is and who he wants to be in your life and mine. The power, the very power of the Niagara Falls speaks of the power of its maker, and God is its maker. The God of Psalm 23 is Yahweh, the great I am, and he made it all. So Psalm 19 and 1 says this, The heavens declare, proclaim, shout out the glory of our God. So this is important because we live in bodies today that are dying. It's decaying. But realize this, we even lived in a, in a depraved planet. But there is no contentment in those things. The most amazing thing about our God is it's just not that he is glorious, but he invites us. He invites us into his presence. And we can come into his presence and know him and receive him and live for him and be blessed by him and be, oh, just overwhelmed by him today. He is filled with today the contentment that we need in our soul today. And so therefore, he is Yahweh the Lord and you know what, dear friend, listen today. He, in, he invites you into his presence. And though today, you know, our God has made a way, you've got to make the step to come through that door. You've got to invite Christ into your heart and your life today. So when David said, the Lord, he is saying, behold, the splendor of the presence, because he indeed, he said, I am finding contentment in the presence of Almighty, in his shadow, there is contentment. And he is an extraordinary God. Secondly, today, the security of his presence, we find, becomes very encouraging to our hearts and our lives. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, God is Rohi, as I mentioned a moment ago, that he is the shepherd. So the Bible uses three categories of the shepherd. Now, let's just touch on those briefly. One, he is the good shepherd. This is referenced in John 10. You can go there and read that. And, and as a good shepherd, the purpose is to give life and also to protect us from destruction. Not only is he the good shepherd, but he is also the great shepherd. This is referenced in Hebrews 13 and verse 20. And as the great shepherd, Christ is better. He is the ultimate high priest today. And therefore, we as the church, we really need to start obeying him and following his direction for our life and letting him guide us and give us what we need to do and do it. Then there's a third one. So he's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. And now the third one is he is the chief shepherd. This is referenced in 1 Peter 5 and 4. This is the superintendent of the, uh, the under-shepherd. So realize as the chief shepherd, he also has authority, wisdom, and grace to guide pastors and leaders who are directing the church. I am a pastor of a church. I'm not the shepherd of this church. I'm the under-shepherd. He is the shepherd. And so David, David gives reference to the 23rd Psalm as God as being a shepherd and we being the sheep. So why do we need a shepherd? Well, Isaiah 53, I think, gives us a definitive answer of why we need this. In verse 6, he says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we as the sheep have wandered away and we are astray and realize we need a shepherd to guide us and he is that shepherd. We need his leadership in our life. This reminds me there's a, basically there is security for us today for the sheep 
that will stay close to the shepherd. When you wander off and you're trying to do your own thing in life, I'm telling you, you're headed for trouble. And you're going to have to come back. You're going to be like the illustration in the Bible that Jesus gave us about the the prodigal son. So realizing that he is our shepherd, he is our guide, our guard, as we journey through life, and he will give us that direction that we need. Uh, Philip Keller wrote the book, The Shepherd of the of Psalm 23. And this is what he says. Let me just read you a, a quip from it today. It is no accident that God has chosen to call us sheep. Our masked mind or our mob instincts, our fears and our timidity, or our stubbornness and our stupidity, he said that, not I, and our, our, our perverse habits are all parallels of profound importance. So, there are four reasons why God has chosen us or called us to be his sheep. And realizing the condition that our lives are in, this is very important. One, we need a shepherd because, don't take this personal, but sheep are dumb. Sheep are dumb. I, I hope I haven't insulted your intelligence. It's never been my intention to do that. But listen, we, we are, there are no Ph.D. sheep. We may think we have a Ph.D., we may think we're smart, but listen, if you don't study sheep, you can't can't train sheep to do anything. I mean, really. So therefore, today, he calls us sheep. Now, don't be insulted by that fact. Your life changes in Christ. You know, people use drugs to destroy their bodies. We enter into relationships that destroys our families. We place ourselves in situations over and over again that damages our life. Our depravity, our depravity is what makes us dumb. That's why we need a shepherd. Secondly, we need a shepherd because sheep are dirty. Sheep are dirty animals. In actuality, uh, sheep has to be washed and, you know, and, and taken care of and tended to because they don't take care of themselves. But realize this today, we, we can't clean up our lives. You may think, well, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start doing that. It's not going to last. And I'm not being negative. I'm being actual with you today. You can't change your life. Only Christ can change your life. Remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You can't change your life. Christ changes your life. Thirdly, we need a shepherd because sheep are defenseless. Sheep will not fight. They won't even flee. So therefore, we have all gotten into issues and things in our head because and lived lives because of our sin. And so we are then made defenseless by, because of our sinful habits and sinful nature. Folks, listen. You, you today cannot get rid of your sin. Only Jesus can through his blood. And I, I like the old song, What Can Wash Away? Our sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And then fourthly, we need a shepherd because sheep are directionless. So sheep can get lost. That's why they need a shepherd. And they can do that, get lost without effort. So, you know, folks, listen. If you're empty, you're hurting today, even if you're in a position that you're ashamed or whatever's going on, I want to encourage you, and listen intently here what I'm going to say. There's a shepherd that loves you. There's a shepherd named Jesus that died for you. There's a shepherd named Jesus that cares for you. And as the old songwriter wrote of old, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Oh, what a friend we find in him today. Thank God we can find security from Satan, from security from... Uh, from yourself and security from sin. All is found in the shadow of the presence of the Savior, our shepherd. And third point today, the supply of his presence, it's endless. Wow, that is good. The supply of his presence is endless. We don't need anything when we have the Lord as our shepherd because a good shepherd takes care of the needs of the sheep. And I'm glad that I'm like David of old. I have I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. 
Listen, contentment is found in the presence of the shepherd, and it should open our eyes today and show us that we really need the Lord in our life. Remember, contentment is not the result of God giving us what we want. Oftentimes, contentment comes when God is changing us and working in our lives, and he will supply your every need to, according to his riches and glory. And God always, hear me, God always knows what's best for you. And sometimes you've got to go through to get to. And folks, let me tell you, God will get you through what you're facing today. Satisfaction is not about what we have. It's about who has us. And Christ is who has us today, if we're children of the Most High God. We have a shepherd who is Jesus, and nothing can separate you from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Read Romans 8, and you'll see that today. Whatever you are seeking in life, whatever you are seeking in life, you will find in the shadow of the shepherd. He will meet your need, and he will bless you immensely today. What an encouragement to our hearts. I really appreciate you tuning in to Viewpoint. I pray that it is an encouragement to your heart, your life, and a strength to you. And we're glad that you watch this program, whether you're watching it on uh, live TV on Chintel Cable or whether you're watching it through YouTube or whether you're watching it through our Facebook page or however you're seeing it. I pray it's a blessing to your heart. I'm going to tell you, though, this is great, and we love the opportunity to come into your home or on your cell phone or wherever, or your TV, but it's nothing like being in that sanctuary and hearing the Word of God preach, and that's what's going to happen this Sunday at 930 and 1130 when the Book of Romans on a study, and we have gotten up to, we started this April 2019, and we are in Romans 13, and it has been phenomenal, and we're going all the way to Romans 16, and I want to encourage you to come and be a part of what God's doing here. It's a safe environment for your family. We also have what's called the Kitty Care Kit. Each child gets one every Sunday. They have an opportunity to work on some biblical things in the pew that's really neat, and then they can take these things home with them also, and next week they'll get another kit uh, kit that will bless them. In addition to that, you'll find uh, people that care for you, but we practice social distancing, and we take all the precautions, and we follow all the protocol of trying to keep a safe environment so that you're not subjected to any type of the coronavirus, and that uh, you can feel comfortable and safe in Gethsemane Baptist Church. A great place to come, a great place to worship, and a great place that the Lord is blessing mightily. Uh, again, I want to remind you of a couple other things. Please join us on my Facebook page, Carlton Duck. We'd love for you to be a part of that. It's, it's very simple. Just go to Facebook, put my name in. We'll be glad to receive you, and you'll have a great time with all the great things that we're doing on Facebook. In addition to that, we would like to invite you to join us on our new website, just launched here a couple weeks ago. It's AliveGBC.com. AliveGBC.com, A-L-I-V-E-G-B-C.com. And join us on that. We'd love to have you. One thing about it, we don't get on and ask for money or donations or nothing like that. Thank God that God supplies our need. We just want to bless you. And as a church, we want to bless you. As a ministry, we want to bless you. And as a pastor, I want to bless you. So come join with us in what God is doing. We'd love to see you. And I believe your heart will be encouraged and blessed, and you will be uplifted. And we, again, appreciate you tuning in to Viewpoint. And we pray that you will join us on Wednesday uh, at 5 o'clock on Facebook for Ask Me Anything. And I believe your heart will be blessed. Well, God bless you today. Keep looking to the shepherd. He cares for you. We're praying for you, and God bless you mightily.